We got predictions for the year 2024. We're gonna go over Pentax. We're gonna go over Canon, Sony. <laughs> Lead with Pentax? You think that's what people are champing at the bit for? I mean, we're gonna cover a lot, okay? Some of the things that we discovered during the research of this surprised me. We're gonna save the big stuff for the end, so stay tuned. We'll get to all that, but first we wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes incredible websites for you. You create your account at squarespace.com slash Chelsea, set up your website completely free. Just try it out. You can choose from beautiful designs that work on computers, smartphones, tablets. When you're ready, the coupon code Chelsea gets you 10% off. This is a great way to jumpstart your business for the new year. Like that should be your new year's resolution, like improve your presence on the web at squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Like I was teasing before, Pentax. Oh, people are so excited to see what Pentax is going to We didn't forget you. 2024. They are going to come out with two compact film cameras. You're making jokes, but I think they're really cute and they're going to sell well and people will like them. Yeah, Pentax used to make little inexpensive, like you could go to CVS and get a $25 camera and stick a roll of 35 millimeter film in there. But that's like what everybody's parents just had on a little lanyard yeah. around their wrist. And that has captured so many of our like memories for at least millennials and older, I think. And, and that's what we filled our photo albums with. So I think there's a certain nostalgia for it and that is definitely coming back. So Pentax will be making some film cameras. and I do not think this is gonna make sense to older people. Like we've seen this and we're like, what the heck? But just think about every young person that has a smartphone in their pocket and they can already take an easy picture that just looks honestly kind of clinical. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is fun for them. You know, people have disposable cameras on their tables at their weddings. I could see this being like one of these at every table at a wedding. I can see people like playing with these at parties and stuff. I think it's a fun idea. So good idea, Pentax. I'm it's excited. It's keeping the Pentax name alive. It's keeping it going. It's keeping the fun alive, Tony. Let's talk about Panasonic Lumix. Micro Four Thirds rumors is saying we might see a GH7 and, and I believe it. Well, it's funny, Tony, because I thought you said Micro Four Thirds was dead. Well, so it is time to readdress that. I, I, they did that in 2018 and I put it on a five year schedule. And so we're at that five year point right now. How are you feeling about I past said Tony? We would definitely see a GH6, but I said, I didn't think we'd see a GH7, but I, I'm changing my mind. I think Panasonic's gonna, gonna run with it. I, I thought they were gonna drop the camera business and I think they were thinking about it. There were rumors that they were gonna go out of business. Okay. I think they'll keep going. Um, I think they will slowly go the direction of Pentax and that we'll see like less and less innovation, but they'll keep putting out some new products. But they anyway, have... I do think we'll see a GH7. I think it'll be like the G9 that we reviewed. I think it'll have face detect autofocus and it'll be better than the GH6. Um, I think that they've had some hits with their products. People really like the S5. I think that was a big hit for them and they put phase detect autofocus in their last camera, so they are developing. Well, I just think that you should me. need to eat crow, Tony. That's why everybody listens to me on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the S5, it was great, um, but it didn't get the attention it deserved, I thought, because no. it did better than the a7 III. But everybody's still more excited about the a7 III than the S5. There are also rumors that Panasonic is going to release a sequel to the S1R, which was their first full frame camera, their high megapixel mm -hmm. camera. I think it makes total sense that we'd see an S1 Mark II and an S1R Mark II bringing in all the features from like the S5, probably phase detect autofocus bringing into that. So those definitely need a refresh. I think that's, I think that that's really exciting for Panasonic. I think that you should put out like a video and the thumbnail will be like you crying and then like handing in a paper that's like, I'm retiring. Oh, I'd love, we'd love to do and... one of those crying YouTuber apology videos. Hey everybody. I'm so sorry. so sorry. I'll just be like putting pepper in your eyes <laughs> to get you to be dramatic. Okay, let's move on to OM Systems. The company formerly known as Olympus. Yeah, it's like Prince, kind of. Yeah. You know, they came out with new stuff and people are excited. The OM System people are still an enthusiastic fan base. Yeah, a shrinkingly enthusiastic fan base, but they are still around. And we, we so tested sassy. the OM1 for wildlife stuff. And it did, it did great. Yes, it did like, do great. I was shocked at how good the autofocus was on it. Um, and I, I think the rumors are saying we're going to see an OM1X, like a bigger version of that. And I think that makes sense. What we're not seeing out of OM is a lot of like breakthroughs, but we're seeing little refinements. 
My hope is the OM1X would be a high megapixel version because that's what we really missed on the OM1. If it still has that same 20 megapixel sensor, I'm gonna be a little sad, but even Panasonic is using, I think, a 26 megapixel sensor in the G9 II. So maybe we could at least get up to 26 megapixels and that would really help with the wild Like stuff. They kind of are just incrementally improving things. Yeah. So if they well, keep up, the they're in the game. Yeah. Like they, buy a bigger sensor. They can buy it from another company. They can get a third party to like help them develop prime lenses if they want to get into sports and wildlife more. Mm -hmm. Like I, I hope they do. Like, but I just haven't seen much out of it. Yet like every new camera from OM has been the same camera as before. Like almost no difference. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. That's kind of why I'm feeling pessimistic. Like there's no difference. Prove him wrong, OM. Yeah, please. Okay. Next, DJI. We do a lot of drone stuff, but then DJI came up with the Pocket 3 this year, which blew us away. Yeah, it blew everybody shot. away. It was, it got was our video camera of the year. It got a spot on our shelf for the stuff that we actually use. That's actually hard to do because I don't like a lot of stuff around. No. So it's got to be good to yeah. impress me. Speaking of like stabilizers and stuff, the DJI enthusiasts are predicting an RS4 gimbal. We have the RS3, but mm -hmm. they're saying that it's going to be lighter, more compact, more intelligent stabilization. Um, if you're not in the video world, the gimbal is what you put your video camera on to stabilize your footage. And it's going to have like longer battery life, they're hoping, and then the rotating screen like the Pocket 3, speaking of the Pocket 3. Yeah, I think that seems like a sure thing. Like DJI just keeps releasing new revs and everyone is noticeably better. Yeah, and I think that it would be really nice to see more intelligence. And I think an overall theme of 2024 is going to be AI. Because AI is just really hot in the news right now. Everybody's talking about it. And so I think we're going to see a lot of marketing about AI. Whether or not it's actually implemented in an impressive way, I'm not sure. But I do think people are going to be talking a lot about AI in camera technology in 2024. My own prediction for them is a, a Ronin 3D. Now, DJI has this Ronin 4D. Yeah. Which is like a camera with a gimbal built in. Except it's big. It's full frame. They're releasing more and more prime lenses for it and it directly takes on cameras like the a7s3 the sony zv series but it's big and huge i think the 8k version is like nine thousand dollars or something so they're going very high market and then they have the pocket 3 which is like 550 dollars in, in its low market i think they will target something in between i think they will call it a ronin 3d and it'll have that full frame sensor but it'll have the gimbal built in and maybe it'll be a three axis gimbal instead of a four axis gimbal but if it works as well as the Pocket 3, but in full frame, it could very well displace our A7S III that we use on our RS3 now. DJI, they're market disruptors right now because they're they really innovating are. really fast. They're innovating new things that we're not seeing in the traditional cameras that we're typically reviewing, and they're doing it well. And now they have own Hasselblad, mm -hmm. so they just have... They're in a position to really do interesting things in the camera industry. I think 2024 is the year that DJI really comes in and shakes things up. Like they really start making a dent in Sony, Nikon, Canon. And I, I think everybody's going to take notice. And I think it'll be an exciting year for that reason. We're going to get to the big four. The big four. Fuji, Canon, Nikon, Sony. But first, we want to take another second to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. I have a prediction. You're going to try Squarespace because, number one, it's free. You don't have to put it in your credit card. You, like, get 14 days for free. So, really, what harm is it to just see if all this talk is actually true? You're going to like it. I just talked to a few people that set one up. One person wanted my template, which I don't remember the name of. Um, but it's very easy to do. It's fun. It makes you look professional. And also, it's an opportunity to get more sales because you can have a gallery, you can book appointments, you can organize, you can put your contracts on there. So no matter what business you have, Squarespace is going to make you look better and it's going to help you make more money. So make it your New Year's resolution to bring yourself to another level and try a Squarespace website for free when you buy it. And you will. You will use the coupon code CHELSEA to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. So go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and check it out. I challenge people to just set up a quick portfolio on Squarespace and then compare it, see how it looks against your Instagram. Because yeah. it looks a hundred times better. And when people see it, they will think more of you as a photographer, as a video creator. What, what, what looks more pro? Like looking somebody up online and finding their social media or looking someone up and finding a website to go along with it? It's just more serious. Let's talk about what Nikon is going to do in 2024 because they got the camera of the year. 
twice over <laughs> from us in 2023 for yeah. the updated Z9 and the Z8. For our annual Pixel Awards, if you haven't seen that, we choose our favorite cameras, which we just gave away, but other things like our favorite accessories and things like that. And Nikon right now, they're in third place with a little bit of distance. But that means that's where we're going to see the big innovation from because they don't have to worry about cannibalization. They're going to throw everything at it. They're trying to get any scrap of market share they can from Sony and Canon. And so that's why I think they're going to be probably the most exciting manufacturer in 2024. I hope so. I'm hoping to see exciting things from them. And they've already made some interesting decisions that have paid off. And that ZF, their retro camera that they came out with this year, has been more successful than they anticipated. It's flying off the shelves. It's back ordered in stores. We can't even get one like we ordered one in a color because we wanted the cool colors. Sunset orange looks so nice. Maybe 2024 they'll finally ship. The Maybe they'll finally we'll finally be able to buy one. But people love them, and I think it's a really good direction for them to go in. I'm glad they had success with that. I think that they will continue to work on more retro type stuff because they also captured a younger market. And they need that. They need younger people excited about photo gear. So I'm hoping to see more retro styled stuff, including. I'd like to float this idea out into the ether. A lineup of retro lenses that are beautiful. Think like the old like Sumalux Leica lenses that are metal looking and cool and have all of the numbers on there. If Nikon had a line of those, they don't even have to be optically perfect. They'd be gorgeous, they'd be cool, they'd be fun. Do that Nikon. I wanna buy all of them. And when I eventually get my ZF, I'll buy all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like that idea. I'd also like to see them make um, X100B competitor. Yes. Like compact, fixed prime lens, but take the good looks of the ZF and make it small and easy for people to use. Just simplify it, but make it cute and tiny. Uh, people they have the parts. People make, make fun of stuff looking cool. I've seen in forums people being like, oh, because it's cool looking now. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, but the whole world is set up on people looking cool. It's weird, <laughs> I know, but it matters. So, yeah, that's going to be a good idea. And, like, the Q3 was also, like, fashionable, cool, selling really well. Yeah, Come on, guys. You could do that. The Olympics are coming up, 2024, and everybody is clamoring to put out their new cameras. Sony got the A9 Mark III launch with its global shutter. I don't think Nikon's going to get the global shutter. Because I think Sony's not making that many of them and Sony sells most, Sony provides their sensors. But yeah. I think Nikon will make a, I'm going to call it a Z9H, a lower megapixel Z9 alternative that has that vertical grip built into it, same form factor, but probably a higher frame rate. Certainly it'll do 30 frames per second raw as opposed to 20, but probably more like 60 frames per second raw maybe even like 120 frames per second raw to compete with the A9 Mark III and probably come in at a lower price point, but really optimized for professional sports photographers like physical ethernet cables and stuff. Also, there's rumors that the Z6 and Z7 III are gonna be coming out and they're due to have that come out. Yeah, I mean, they launched with the Z6 and Z7 in what, 2018, end of yeah. 2018? And they were the first generation. It wasn't. It wasn't ready. And then we, we didn't like them. them. We didn't like them at all. Yeah. Which is why we don't have a ZF right now. Okay. <laughs> we're in an industry where <laughs> you can't remembers. really be talking <laughs> shit. Like an elephant. And that's why we're wildly unlikable. But we do really say what we believe, and we do believe that the Z63 is going to be excellent because there's rumors that they're going to put the autofocusing system from the Z8, and the Z8 is amazing. And so now we're going to see that technology trickle down to these more entry-level cameras. Yeah, and it's about time because they did update them with the Z6 and Z7 too, yeah. but they were like such minor updates yeah. that we just like didn't think much of it. But I think this will be a better update. It'll be like it'll probably the ZF seems to work better. Not that I've gotten a touch one, so it'll probably be the guts from the Z. Well, how do you know that? What would you watch? Never I mind. I just watch Chris and Jordan's reviews, that's all. Oh, okay. I also think they desperately need a good vlogging camera because they really don't have one now. Um, and like they're real, they're already really far <laughs> behind on vlogging. You know, Casey Neistat, when did he start that? Like eight years ago or something? Yeah. Uh, Nikon still doesn't do it very well, but they have better autofocus. So maybe they can integrate that good video autofocus into a compact camera and try to take on Sony's ZV series. Actually, I think vlogging is kind of like, nobody's really doing that Nikon. So maybe yeah. instead do a creator package with a lot of the same things as a vlogging camera, 
but a lot of people just want to set up a studio and sit down and make like TikToks. So vlogging's kind of out. Maybe you could get ahead and rebrand it as something like creator cool or something. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of saying vlogging sarcastically because it is like your dad's YouTube. Like my nowadays. dad doesn't have YouTube. My dad <laughs> th doesn't even dad. have a phone because I don't want people to call me. <laughs> What's gonna happen? Your mother's gonna call me, and that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think instead we should be thinking TikTok. Like that's much more the future. And if I think they should be making vertical cameras. Mm -hmm. But let's face it, like vertical took off like three years ago, which means it's still like two years away for the camera manufacturers. Yeah. They're like, hey, whoa, people are using vertical formats now? I feel like like um, the town crier for the camera companies because like I'm an old lady. I'm literally a grandma. And I'm like, guys, I think the kids like vertical. And the camera companies are like, 5,000 megapixels? What? <laughs> you could do a billion frames per second. Speaking of, <laughs> let's talk about Sony and what they're going to do in 2024. Sony, yeah, let's talk about it. What do you think? What's your big prediction? Um, well, they already, the A93 is here with the global shutter. It's like they really dropped the mic at the end of 2023. Yeah, but that is not a camera that many people are going to buy. It's pretty niche. And w when I look at the different lineups, I see huge holes in Sony's lineup that really need to be filled. Like, Sony does not have a good Canon R8 competitor. Canon R8 is like a $1,300 full-frame camera, does 4K60 video. It's just, it's an amazing all-around camera. And Sony has nothing similar. And so I've been steering people to R8. And I'd love to get them into the Sony system with more lenses and all that, but... You need to fill that empty space. Tony, they were innovating an entirely new shutter and <laughs> sensor. They need to make some cameras that people can afford. Like, let's get closer to $1,000 than $6,000. And I, I think the same thing needs to happen with APS-C. We need uh, R10, R7 competitors. We need, you know, higher frames per second. The A6700 with its 10 frames per second, that's not going to cut it in 2024. We need to be... 30 frames per second and over. So increase the frames per second, increase the video quality, and get those prices way, way, way down. I think that that's a good plan. They can also make like a more affordable 200 to 800 lens for wildlife, more affordable long lenses. Yeah, I would like to see them get a little more reach because we see Canon doing that too. Um, we've also been dreaming, hoping, praying that they will come out with an android based camera they have their phone and we feel like they could just integrate to like mush them together and make an android based camera that's capable of just you know gps cellular connection go online post your photos from your camera like let's do it yeah what was it like august when i had that uh, the usual suspects moment when i started to piece together that i thought they were building this android camera ever since then i've become more and more pessimistic about it because You've I've, had a dream. I, I've talked to the engineers a couple of times when I talk about the possibility of using Android for software development on the camera platforms and all the things they could do. I just don't see any interest in their Listen, eyes. Listen, mm, no one looks excited to see you when you walk in the room. <laughs> Start so. talking about Android. All I can say Maybe is that's that the if I were developing something and the person who agreed with me walked in, I'd be like, hi, I'm excited to talk to you. And I've seen that happen before. Yeah. When we go to press events for various things, like sometimes I'll single you out and be like, I liked your video. And this time they're just like, this guy. <laughs> I'm just going to have to send you under the Kevlar vest if you keep coming up with these difficult to implement ideas, okay? Okay, well maybe something that actually will happen is finally an 85 F1.2. And this is a carryover from last year. Because like Canon and Nikon have this and like most of what these camera companies do is just look at their competitors and then do the same thing. And I really want an 85 F1.2. Okay. Right now when I shoot 85 F1.2, I pick up my R5, which is good. But Sony wants people shooting Sony. I, that was, sounds doable. Yeah, and their 85 is super old. All right. I guess let's bank on the 85 F1 too then. Okay. And scale it back from your Android dreams. <laughs> Sony Alpha Rumors is talking about an update to the RX1R series, which is it's like the sensor from the A7R series, but in a like fixed zoom lens compact camera, like pocketable camera. So it, it's sort of in the same vein as the Leica Q3, like high megapixel, ultimate image quality, but just as small as possible. And so I, I think we'll see an update for that, you know, a 60 megapixel camera with 
their AI autofocus system and the most compact lens that they can possibly make. And I, I think there'll be a niche for that. I've been urging a lot of companies to go into like retro style gear, but for some reason I just don't see that for Sony. They just seem so technical and like for people that are more into tech and less into legacy. So I'm feeling like it's not going to be that vintagey look. No, I, I really wish it would. You do? Yeah, I, I totally think Sony should make a retro camera. Everybody else is making them, and they're hugely popular. But you're right; I, they they just don't. They like they're like function over form. I don't think it like is on brand for them for some reason. But it would yeah. be cool. All right, let's talk about Canon next. Uh, you know, we've been predicting the R1 for 140 years. And so as soon as the A1 was released, they're like, okay, Canon has to answer. And it's been like three years and they haven't done it. And yeah. then and now Sony has released a second sports camera that Canon has also not answered. And we're starting to be like, Canon, where are you? You're supposed to be the sports camera company. Well, the thing is, you've been talking about how Sony has to fill in their lineup with more affordable stuff, and Canon has been doing that. Yeah, so maybe right. they're taking a different approach of just like getting a bunch of sales and getting people into the system at this lower end. Like maybe Canon actually like looked at the economy and decided not to make a $6,000 camera? I don't know. I'm just saying that clear, they're working on stuff. They're coming out with good products, but it's not like this... R1 that we've been hoping for. We are still predicting it's going to come out. It's got to come out before the Olympics. <laughs> we, we're definitely going to see it. And I bet in the next two months we'll see an R1 launch. Like what we'll if, see it on YouTube. What if someone like everybody else. shot the Olympics with like the R8? They were like, it could be done. Yeah, you know, that's not a bad idea. Just show like, okay, we could do this with a $1,300 camera. Because they could do a decent job at I it. I mean, that would be amazing press canon. Like, can you imagine if you just showed that your very affordable camera could be at the Olympics? You'd be selling, baby. You'd be selling. All right. I, anyway, I think the R1 has to have 50 megapixels or 45 or something. And I think it needs to be at least 60 frames per second. Like, it's got to be faster than the Sony A1 that's now like three or four years old. It's not going to have a global shutter. So maybe now it's going to be the R2. Because they have to, like, save some room. they got to save. The R1's got to be the best. Yeah. It's not going to have a global shutter. Now it's the R2. I know. They just keep pushing it down, and then they just fall further. further. They could do some funny marketing and have a globally shutter. You know when it's, like, cheese food instead of cheese? <laughs> yeah. And it's, like, maybe they could trick us a little bit. Yeah, it's, like, named after uh, Stephen Globel, <laughs> one of their engineers, <laughs> in honor of Stephen Globel. We'll call it the Globel shutter. That's a way. I'm just saying, I've got workarounds for. I have predictions, but I also have some input on how to be real sneaky and sell stuff. Um, and it's got no rolling shutter at all. Like S U S H U D D E R. <laughs> no rolling shutter. <laughs> That's, we've got ideas. Come to us. Consult <laughs> with us. Clearly, we're very smart people. Um, you know what? If you want to know more about our R1, or our two predictions. We have a whole video about that, so you can check that out. Um, people are talking about seeing an R5 Mark II in the wild. Yeah, I think Canon Rumors has covered this, and I, I, of course, like sure. it's overdue. The R6 Mark II is long out. And sure. I, I think all they need to do is to re-release the R5, but give it a faster sensor, like I'd be a stacked sensor. I'd be excited about that. I love the R5. Yeah, and and that makes perfect sense to be their answer to the Nikon Z8. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and really the Sony A1 too, a high megapixel quick yeah. camera. I would also like to see, an, like there was the 5DSR. Remember how that was the 50 megapixel yeah. version of the 5D Mark mm -hmm. III? I would like to see an SR version of the R5 Mark II SR. The name gets really bad, but give me like a 100 megapixel camera that, okay, slow readout speed. But well, Canon has been teasing 100 megapixel cameras for like eight years now remember we even saw one they brought us up to the canon expo in new york and they showed us like a hundred megapixel camera and we're like oh we want that and then it like never happened like finally give us that I give us a studio it. camera Keep that. oh but you saw those hasselblad files and you wanted that yeah because i liked like what the you could do with like the shutter sync speeds like you didn't care about the megapixels. Oh man. Okay. I would. I still think there's room for a high megapixel, 100 megapixel full frame camera. I think Canon can give it to us. I also think they need to give us 
like finally 24 and 35 millimeter primes. <laughs> like there's yeah. so many lenses completely missing from the RF lineup that it's like embarrassing. Like why don't you have a 24 and 35? Get those out as soon as possible. Damn, you're sassy. It has been so long to not have these basic primes. Sassy, man. I'm still using the old 24 DSLR lens. Yeah, that's true. It's very old. There's also rumors that they're coming out with a 70 to 200 f2.8, and they have like the new compact one, but the image quality isn't super great. So this one will probably be bigger and better. Yeah, optimized for image quality yeah. instead of size. I think that makes that like that's for wedding photographers and such. Um, also, Canon rumors said a 200 to 500 millimeter f4, oh, possibly in the that's, second. That's going to be big. That's got to be like the same size as one of our 600 f4s. Yeah. And probably over 10 grand, but just like with zoom. Zoom is nice for wildlife. Oh, it sure is. Sometimes things too. are close. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's no animals and you end up seeing a pretty leaf. You need to be versatile in the field. <laughs> Using this big lens and photographing a leaf. Somebody walks up and you're just like on the ground. Brings it to a portrait Photographers shoot. are crazy people. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, yeah. And then... Retro cameras? I like to just have one <laughs> theme that I sew. AI? No, I, honestly, definitely the, not. What? Like, when did the, the X100V only became popular like a year or two ago, right? Yeah. And camera manufacturers seem to have like a five year lead time. So maybe we still have like another three years. <laughs> Retro cameras will be totally gone, and then suddenly Canon will be launching their own X100V competitor. Speaking of the X100V, we have Fuji predictions, and I'm a big Fuji fan. I have an X100V. Um, I go into forums and I say mean things to people. I go into people's reviews and I call them stupid in the comments. So I'm very invested in the brand. <laughs> yeah, and Fuji is absolutely crushing it. Like, we don't really talk about the instant cameras, but they are outselling everybody all these interchangeable lens cameras because everybody wants them and fuji is raking it in i think they're making more money than anybody else at this point so we went to a big box store i won't say they have a, a logo that is a bullseye <laughs> i don't know why you feel like you can't say where we were because they will they're very litigious <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, but we went, we looked at their camera selection and they had mostly like Fuji Instax cameras. Uh -huh. And then I don't even remember which other cameras they had. They had they two. Had a bunch of Polaroids, a bunch of Instax, and then they had an R100 and an, uh, like a T3i. Like two very old Canon cameras and those were the only interchangeable lens cameras they had. But no, and the, the rest was like a bare shelf. Yeah, but they also had these really cheap cameras that were like something you'd buy on Amazon, like no name. Mm. And then a ton of Instax. Yeah. So what I'm saying is Fuji has this broad appeal and they're making a lot of money doing the Instax stuff, but also very serious photographers love them, including myself. I think that they're gonna come out with the X100V successor. Everybody's talking about it, everybody agrees. I got it from Fuji Rumors, which I highly recommend. Patrick there also has a YouTube channel mm -hmm. and I watched some of his videos. He's so pleasant. Yeah. He's you know, really he's in the Dolomites. He's always just showing beautiful scenery and, and giving us Fuji facts. But yeah, the successor is rumored to have the same lens as the X100V. And then I, I don't know any more details about that. But they should. That thing is sold out everywhere. I wish they could come up with a better name. X100V. Like, what a confusing name. They're also, yeah. they're also supposed to make a successor to the GFX100S. Yeah. which is the less expensive version of the GFX100 that they came out with the Mark II for. So it won't necessarily have like an interchangeable viewfinder. It's a little bit simpler and a little bit less expensive. That makes sense. Um, the Fuji community has been really waiting for the X-Pro4. Yeah, me too. That was one of my favorite cameras, but yeah, it got kind of old. Yeah, it did, but... This is their like rangefinder styled X-mount interchangeable lens camera. Oh, wait, so you're a Fujifilm fan too? Yeah, I love my X-Pro3. I know you do. But yeah, it is a little old. Like the yeah. autofocus is a little weak. They're also rumored to be coming out with some new lenses. So it's kind of interesting. I think like one of them is the XF16 to 50 millimeter F28 to F48. And it's supposed to replace like their standard kit lens. And it's supposed to have an internal zoom that is rumored from Fuji Rumors. I got it from there. So I think that that's interesting. It's due for a refresh. It's due for an update. I think what's more exciting is that there are also rumors that they're coming out with telephoto primes for the X mount. And when we use the X-H2, 
like the autofocus and everything worked really well for wildlife, but we just didn't think the lens selection was really big enough for someone to buy into, right? You want to buy into a system. So it'd be exciting to see them come out with a sports and wildlife system to go with the X-mount camera. Yeah, and I think as more and more people shift to smartphones, the things smartphones can't do are pulling a lot of people to interchangeable lenses. So we see a lot of people buying cameras for sports and wildlife. And so I think it makes sense for the manufacturers to sort of flesh that out. Also, people love Fuji for their filters, their presets, which, hey, it sounds silly to use them. They really are great. So I think they're going to come out with a new film simulation that looks like if you accidentally forget you have film and you put it through the x-ray machine at the airport. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Or like a film simulation that simulates that picture that you had in your wallet. You know, your your mom would go to work and show pictures of her kids and it would just be all wrinkled up and stuff. Yeah, or like if you develop it wrong and it's all messed up and you can't really see the people. <laughs> yeah, unskilled developer. Uns that's what they're going to call it. It's called unskilled and it's going to be... scratches on it from everyone. running through this film scanner. Oh, yeah, it could be called like my first photo class, <laughs> you know. So. Maybe they'll make like a Olin Mills filter. Just make everything look like Olin Mills. That would okay, be hilarious, that actually. Take actually off an AI. That I would, would work. really like that. So those are just some things I'm throwing out there that would be great. Um, yeah, they have a bunch of new lenses in their roadmap too. I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out. Tony, before we wrap it up, I wanted to talk about, you know, we've had a lot of predictions, but I think that we should share our hopes, our dreams and our wishes as okay. well. So one of them is that I would like more cameras to have the content credentials that Leica just came out with so that we can actually prove that our photos are real and not AI. Yeah, and I'd like to see a full like workflow for that. Like I want that to actually be available to consumers and for us to be able to check images more readily. Right now it's kind of a clumsy system, but let's refine that. I'm also still hoping and wishing for anti-theft technology like we have in our phones and our cameras because we are sitting ducks and photographers keep getting robbed. I want to move past the SD card thing. Yeah. Like the Hasselblad has internal storage, which would be, that's a good first step, but let's also get some wireless connectivity that's like fast and automatic because I'm so sick of moving floppy drives around. It's 2023. I know. I'd like to just cut out that process. But you kind of stepped on me because I was going to say if we can't get the anti-theft technology, maybe we could at least get like a built-in mace feature. Oh, You nice. know, next to the shutter button where you, uh -huh. you know, you can fight off the people. Okay, that would go terribly wrong for me because I'm kind of clumsy and I can definitely <laughs> see myself macing myself. <laughs> or your or your portrait subject. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have to be careful, but it's better than what they have so far. Um, another idea I had was custom shutter sounds. Because mm -hmm. right now it's like it could be silent or it could just be like... <sniffs> but why couldn't you have it be different sounds that could be pleasing for your subject? So okay. I was thinking like... What sounds? Bird sounds. So when you're taking bird photos, they look at you. Oh, that's good. Or um, cat photos could work. Yeah, or cat photos, um, fart sounds. So if you take family portraits, you get a real smile. That's mm -hmm. just funny. Can you imagine that? Like, that was the only thing I liked about our Tesla. Remember how I could make it fart in each of the different seats? Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. A classic. Also, like, squeaky sounds. So if you're taking pictures of a dog, they could do the cute head tilt thing. Or you could, like, custom do it. Like, I could just be like, hey, you! And then that's my <laughs> shutter. I don't know. Like, no one's done it before, so why not just talk about it? I... I agree. That's a great idea. Also, I had the idea of a post my screen option where you immediately share photos from your camera on social media, but it's like an actual screen capture. So people see like your settings and everything and they know how freaking cool you are. They're like, F12? This person's not effing around. You know, that's actually a great idea. I know. There, there are so many so photography smart. TikTokers. Right. And they would love to just show the behind the scenes. That's part of it. Just give me a screen recording feature. Great idea, Charles. Yeah, all these have been great ideas. Have you not been listening to the fart sound <laughs> shutter button? Fire, yeah. I'm freaking brilliant. You know what I mean? Um, and then also, I would like a build my camera option at any camera store where I could go to like Sony and I could spec out like a car, my own camera. I want a global shutter. I want this. I want that. And I just build my own. I want it to be like blue. And I want it to say my name on it. And I want it to have mace built in. And I want it to have a fart shutter. Awesome. I don't think you're asking too much at all. <laughs> this seems totally reasonable. What, are, like, what else? What are other people asking for? Like, more megapixels. So boring. <laughs> I'm going to change the game. 
You want the screenshot feature already, see? Yeah. You know how many people are probably looking for a buy now button for the shutter button sound thing? Like, what are your hopes and dreams? Let us know down in the comments below. Do you think our predictions are off? Do you think it's hilarious that Tony was so wrong about micro four, four thirds being dead? Like, ah, uh, in your face. Let us know. And of course, be sure to try out Squarespace. Not only do they provide a great service that makes you look more professional, but they make this podcast possible. So when you check them out, be sure to use our coupon code CHELSEA and spell it correctly, C-H-E-L-S-E-A. That lets them know that we're doing okay. And also you'll be blessed with an amazing website where you can drag and drop. It's super easy. Just go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and check it out. Thanks. Bye.